the ancient men were always able to relate the happenings of earth with that of the sky. They looked into certain patterns and alignments of the stars and planets before sowing the seeds as the celestial bodies helped predict their future. The happenings of the heaven reflected the happenings on earth. The movement of certain planets and stars caused rain, changing of seasons, some increased fertility of the soil, and some brought plague and war. Time was never measured but interpreted with the help of the moon and the sun. Age of men were divided into categories, into yugas or into ages of the zodiacs. Astrology evolved as a science with years of sky watching and analysis of happenings. The stars, planets and constellations evolved into gods that brought good and bad happenings. The early enlightened men created myths hymns and mantras to take control of nature and to ask their needs to their celestial gods. God crafting and myth making went hand in hand. These myths were not just wild stories but celestial recordings. We will deal with one such myth today. Hundreds of stories of the travels of gods and heroes, although they appear to take place on earth, actually they take place among the stars and represent planetary movements. The fall of the age of titans and rise of the Olympians. We will be looking into the myths of Indo-Greek European tribes as they were sky worshippers. Starting from Titans. In Greek mythology, the Titans were the pre-Olympian gods. They were the twelve children of the primordial parents, Uranus the sky god and his mother Gaia the earth goddess. Uranus imprisoned Gaia's youngest children in Tartarus, deep within the earth, which caused pain to Gaia. She shaped a great sickle and asked her sons to castrate Uranus. Oli Cronus, youngest and the most ambitious of the Titans, was willing. He battled his father and castrated him, casting his severed testicles into the sea. A comparative study of Indo-European mythology brings the identification of Uranus with the Vedic deity Varuna, who was the god of the sky and waters, and the etymological equation is now considered untenable, even though the origin myths of the two deities differ in different levels. Varuna of the Rig Veda was a highly revered god. He was hailed as the sky god, the powerful Asura, the king of both men and gods, and of all that exists. He governed the laws of nature as also the conduct of men, one who liberates one from sins, the merciful god as well as the punisher of the sinners. He is connected with the symbolic waters of creation from which the manifest world emerged. Varuna is called an Asura. Asura is a term that can be closely related to titans of the Greek myths. Asuras are seen in a negative sense in later Puranas. But in Vedas, 
many gods are called asuras in many hymns and mantras dedicated to them we see the split between asuras and devas in the puranic era the imagery of creation springing forth from the creator was initially related to varuna this is because varuna in the early phases of rigveda was the creator who brought forth all existence but since the virtues and powers of varuna merged into vishnu in the later myths in puranas lotus came to be depicted as rising from the navel of narayana or vishnu resting on the celestial waters the functions of uranus or varuna was that of the vanquished god of an elder time before real time began saturn or cronus was the god of agriculture and harvest according to mythology the god saturn took the position of the king of gods from his father uranus the rule of saturn or cronus was seen as a golden age was saturn a bright star when planet earth resided during the golden age in fact the star worshippers specifically distinguish it from our sun by calling it the best sun the primeval sun the central sun researchers have suggested that as a result of disruption saturn went through a short nova like phase in which its light would have obscure everything else visible from earth some also stated that the babylonians called saturn the sun star to primordial man this was the time of the purple dawn the great dream time of our distant past celebrated in the oral and written traditions of ancient people at that time there was no sun as we know it today or at least very few observed it there was no way to tell day from night not much stars could be seen through the dense atmosphere there was no moon from which to tell the passing of time by its phases or from which earth's oceans could be influenced in great tidal movements man lived in a perpetual state of dusky darkness the warm and purple hue permeated all existence earth in its distant past is reported by ancient traditions to have enjoyed a stable relationship with a dimly lit sun or star that sat motionless at the celestial north pole this purple dawn period would have produced an environment of twilight with uniform global temperatures producing virtually no winds and there being a complete inability to calculate time all continents including antarctica would have supported the continual growth of fantastically elongated and reddish vegetation in tropical abundance adapted through its red coloring to absorb saturn's radiated energy rather than its light earth's vegetation would have enjoyed a complete absence of seasons and this would have contributed to a densely rich atmosphere 
able to support the flight of giant insects that we know once existed. From orbit, the Earth's ocean levels would have been significantly lower, leading to large versions of the existing continents as well as the existence of now lost and submerged continents. The spiraling nature of the brown dwarf star's approach to the Sun would have meant that first contact between their plasma sheets would have been relatively brief. In fact, there may have been multiple contacts into the distant past before the Saturn system was finally captured by the Sun. This may account for the periodic extinction events in the fossil record as each contact caused Saturn to flare up and die down with marked changes in the relationship between Earth and its northern star, Saturn. By the time mankind witnessed such an event, contact would have manifested itself as a sudden and very bright flaring of its polar star into a fully fledged sun. The pre flat myths talks about fertile soil, men with long life, higher dimensions, intellect and capabilities. These characters may be due to the influence of Saturn. Earth itself would have been migrating over the ages. After many catastrophic events, the slowly retreating Saturn, or at least its position in the sky over the Earth, was now being stalked by another player in the grand cosmic drama, Jupiter. Saturn began a descent below the horizon. At this time, another bright star was seen to merge in what had been Earth's southern skies. It too was seen to have rings and due to the increased electrical activity in the region, also spotted its own current which sent electrical arcing displays out into the space. He was called Zeus by the Greek and Jupiter by the later Romans. This previously hidden star seemed to supplement the role of dying Saturn as the dominant force in the heavens. Saturn was also called the star of the sun, which the researchers believe Earth must have once been a satellite of Saturn. Still others may suppose that the pre flat year was indeed the period of Earth's revolution, but that Earth was revolving around Saturn and the change in orbits caused the flat. Saturn was disrupted in the near collision with Jupiter. Knowing little or nothing of the details, we can most easily imagine such an encounter in terms of Saturnian planetary system which included the Earth being invaded, dismembered and captured by an interloping system of relatively giant consisting essentially of the present Sun and Jupiter. In all ancient religions, the dominion passes from Saturn to Jupiter. In Greek mythology, Cronus is presented as the father and Zeus as his son who dethrones him. Cronus devours some of his children. After this act, Zeus overpowers his father, puts him in chains and drives him from his royal station in the sky. A similar scenario is observed in the real world. Like the ancient Greek god Cronus, 
who devoured his children, a star 550 light years from Earth, has been discovered to be slowly consuming its offsprings, crushing one or more planets in its orbit into vast clouds of gas and dust.